Hi, we'll begin to study determinants in this lesson. Namely, we will analyze second and third order determinants and consider the concept of a determinant in general. Let's start with the second order determinant. Let's consider a square matrix A of size 2 by 2. We know that in general terms, its elements can be written as A11, A12, A21, A22. The determinant of a 2 by 2 square matrix is the number which we denote as follows, as the determinant A. Or we can denote it simply as the delta A. In some cases, we can denote it simply as delta, if it is clear which matrix we are talking about. And is denoted like the matrix, but in square brackets. That is, it is a number. In this case of a 2 by 2 matrix, this is calculated as follows. We need to multiply the elements on the main diagonal, A11 by A22, and subtract the elements, multiplied on the secondary diagonal. That is, this determinant will be equal to A11 times A22 minus A12 times A21. This is how the determinant of the second, second order is calculated. It's called a second order determinant because, because there was a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's take a look at some example. Let's suppose we have such a determinant. Let's calculate it. As we have said, we need to multiply the elements on the main diagonal. That is 1 by 4. And subtract the product of the elements on the secondary diagonal. 2 by 3. If we calculate this, then it will be equal to minus 2. That is, this determinant is equal to minus 2. Let's consider another example. Let's say 5 minus 2, 3 minus 1. Let's try to calculate it. Multiply the elements on the main diagonal. 5 by minus 1. That's minus 5. Subtract the product of the elements on the secondary diagonal. 2 by minus 3 is minus 6. That is, we subtract minus 6. Minus 5 minus minus 6 is equal to 1. Now let's consider the determinant of 3 by 3. For this we need to consider a square matrix A of 3 by 3 size. We can write its elements as A1, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, a32, A33, determinant of 3 by 3 matrix, that is, the determinant of the matrix A, which is the same as the delta A, or the same as similar matrix but in square brackets. The determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix is such a definite number, which is calculated according to the following rule. Let's depict this rule schematically. I will schematically depict the determinant and mark its elements with points. And we need one more determinant. Sometimes we can use the so-called rule of triangles in order to calculate a 3 by 3 determinant. This rule is as follows. In order to calculate the determinant, the elements on the main diagonal are taken first. We multiply them. Then we add this result. To the result of multiplication of these elements, these three elements. Why are these taken? Pay attention that this line is parallel to the main diagonal. We take this parallel line and connect it to this vertex. We got such a triangle. That is, we have multiplied the elements on the main diagonal, added them with these multiplied elements, and now we need to take these elements. This line is also parallel to the main diagonal. We also multiply and add it with the result. We subtract a similar value from the received number, but we calculate it differently. We take a secondary diagonal. Multiply the numbers on this diagonal. Then we take a line parallel to it. Triangle. 
and triangle. After calculating, we should get some number. This number will be the determinant of the third order. Let's consider an example. Let's suppose we have such a determinant. Let's try to calculate it. We'll use the rule of triangles. So at first, we take the elements on the main diagonal and multiply them. 1 by 3 by 3, this is 3. We add to them the product of these elements. These three elements that form a triangle. One side of the triangle is parallel to the main diagonal. In our case, the product of these elements, these two and 0, well, 0 by 0 and by 0 is 0. We add it to the previous result. Now we take these three elements, which form this triangle. In our case, this is minus 1. 2, 2, multiply, minus 4. We have calculated the first part. Subtract product from the result. On the secondary diagonal. In our case, the secondary diagonal, 2 by 3 by 0 is 0. Add this triangle. That is, we take parallel to the secondary diagonal and make a triangle. 1 by 0 by 2, this is 0 as well. And we are considering this, this triangle, also parallel to the secondary diagonal. Minus 1 by 0 by 1, we are lucky. The entire second part is equal to 0 in this case. Calculate minus 1. That is, this determinant is equal to minus 1. If you are not comfortable using the rule of triangles, then you can use the so-called rule of Saras. It is as follows. Here we have a third order determinant. We add to it the first and second columns of this determinant. That is, here we will have the first column a11, a21, a31, and we add the second column a12, a22, a32. You can write it down with a pencil in the notebook. Now. We take the main diagonal to calculate this determinant. Then we take a line parallel to the main diagonal and another line that is parallel to the main diagonal. We've got this, we've got three such lines. Elements on the same line are multiplied and added to other results. We calculate this. Now, we take the elements on the second diagonal and parallel to it. In the same way, we calculate these elements, multiply and add, and subtract the second result from the first result, and we get a determinant. Let's take a look at an example. 1, 2, let's say a 0, minus 1, 3, 5, 0, 2, 3. Let's try to calculate this determinant. We add the first column according to the rule of Saras. Add the second column. 2, 3, 2, and now we calculate. We take the main diagonal parallel to it, add another parallel, and another one parallel to it. Calculate 1 by 3 by 3 is 9. 2 by 5 by 0, 0. Add to the previous result. 0 by minus 1 by 2 is 0. Add to the previous result. We subtract what we have on the second diagonal from this result. That is, this line, this line, and this line. 0 by 3 by 0 is 0. 1 by 5 by 2 is 10. 2 by minus 1 by 3 is minus 6. Calculate it. Here is 9, here is 4. 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. Thus, we can calculate the third order determinant using the rule of Saras. In fact, what we have just calculated are ready-made formulas. However, it is not a definition of the determinant. Let's see what determinant is. In the general case, the concept of a determinant is inextricably linked with the concept of permutations. For example, we have n natural numbers from 1 to n. We will get a permutation if we rearrange any numbers. For example, we have 1, 2, and so on. We can rearrange 2 and 1. Thus we get one of the permutations. 
total number of such permutations, if you remember combinatorics, a permutation of n numbers, is n factorial. For example, let's have numbers 1, 2, 3. How many possible permutations will there be? We have three numbers, so we have 3 factorial, that's 6. 3 factorial is, let me remind you, 1 by 2 by 3, and factorial, respectively, 1 by 2 and so on, multiply to n. Let's analyze all the permutations. Permutation 1, 2, 3, identical permutation. Permutation 1, 3, 2. Also, we can put 2 in first place. 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2. And 3, 2, 1. We have found all six permutations. Also, the concept of a determinant is related to the concept of inversions in these permutations. If the permutation is denoted as alpha 1, alpha 2, and so on, alpha n, then the number of inversions we will denote as n, in brackets alpha 1, and so on. And let's try to calculate the number of inversions. In order to calculate the number of inversions, we proceed as follows. Let's look at them one by one. Looking at 1, 2 comes next, 1 comes before 2. It's fine. Then we're looking at 3. 1, 3, that is, 3 comes after 1. This is also normal. That is, we have no inversions for 1. Moving on to the next, 2 and 3. They are also in the correct order. So there is no inversion. Then this permutation has zero inversions. In fact, we have all the numbers in the correct order. Accordingly, there are no inversions. Looking here at 1, 1, 3, 3 comes after 1. That's fine. We're looking at 1, 2, 2 comes after 1. This is normal. That is, there are no inversions. Let's move on to the next. 3, 2, 3 and 2. 3 comes after 2. It's wrong. That is, we have one inversion. Then we calculate 2. Well, this is the last number. So there is no inversion in this permutation. Looking here. 2, 1. 1 comes after 2. That's wrong. This is inversion. Looking, 2, 3, 3 comes after 2. All right. Moving on to the next number. 1, 3, 3 comes after 1. That's fine. So in this permutation we have one inversion. 2, 3, 1. We're looking, 2, 3, right order. 2, 1, wrong order. That is, there's already one inversion. Looking at 3, 3, 1. Again, 3 comes before 1. That's wrong. So, another inversion. That is, we have two inversions in this permutation. We're looking here. 3, 1, this is wrong. 3, 2, wrong as well. And we already have two inversions. Looking 1, 2, all right. So there are two inversions. We're looking at 3, 2, 1. We start with 3. 3, 2, wrong order again. 3, 1, wrong order again. We already have two inversions in total. Now we are looking at 2, 2, 1. They are in the wrong order, so another inversion. Three inversions in total. Thus we can calculate the number of inversions for each permutation. And the calculation of the determinant comes with the help of permutations. And these numbers of inversions. Now on the basis of this we introduce the concept of a determinant, of the nth order. The determinant of this order is denoted as follows. and so on, a1, 1, a1, 2, a n1, a n2, a n n, is the number that is calculated according to the following rule. The sum, the Greek letter sigma, means sum. The sum goes over all kinds of permutations of numbers, from 1 to n. Let's denote these permutations as alpha1, alpha2, and so on, alpha n. The sum goes over all possible permutations of numbers, from 1 to n, and the following elements are added, minus 1 to the power of n, alpha 1 and so on, alpha n, that is, minus 1 to the power of the number of inversions corresponding to the permutation, multiplied by a1, alpha 1, a2, alpha 2, and so on, a n, alpha n. In other words, the products of numbers of this determinant that don't lie in the same row and in the same column are summed up, and the sum goes over all kinds of permutations considering the sign. The sign will be positive if the number of inversions is even. 
and will be negative if the number of inversions is odd. This is the concept of a determinant, the definition of determinant for any order of n. Let's try to analyze this definition using the example of a second order determinant. Here we have a second order determinant, a11, a12, a21, a22. And we will write it down according to this definition. This is the sum over all possible permutations of numbers from 1 to n. In our case, n is 2. So this is the sum over all possible permutations of the numbers 1 and 2. There is also minus 1 to the power of n from this permutation. Multiply by a1 alpha 1 and a2 alpha 2, since we have only two elements. Let's try to write down this sum. Please note that if the sum goes over all sorts of permutations, we have n factorial permutations. Then the factorial of the terms will participate in this sum. Accordingly, if we have n equal to 2, then there will be n factorial of two terms. Permutations of numbers 1, 2. We have only two permutations, 1, 2 and 2, 1. So we have the sum of these two permutations. The first permutation is 1, 2. That is, we have minus 1 to the power of n from permutation 1, 2. a1, alpha 1 in this case, is 1. Multiply by 2. Alpha 2 is 2. Sum up plus the next permutation minus 1 to the power of n from the second permutation 2, 1 multiply by a, a1 alpha 1 in our case is this first number and a2, alpha 2 is 1 that is, we have written down the second order determinant according to this formula now let's consider what will be equal to this number? This is the correct arrangement, 1, 2. So the number of inversions is 0 here. Minus 1 to the power of 0 is 1. The number of inversions is 1 here, because 2 comes before 1. So it is minus 1 to the power of 1. That's minus 1. So we get the following first. A1, 1, A2, 2. two. Here we have minus 1 to the power of 1, that is, minus a1, 2, a2, 1. Pay attention, we've got this expression, a1, 1 multiplied by a2, 2, minus a1, 2, a2, 1. This is exactly the formula that we've used when calculating the second order determinant. But now we have found out that it is obtained from the definition of the determinant. This video lesson is over.